Hello everyone, this video is about bed wetting or enduresis. I will discuss the causes, symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. Child development of the control of urination and defecation involve physical and cognitive maturation and it is strongly influenced by the cultural norms, socio-economic status and family practices. Now in the first half of the 20th century, Toilet mastery by 18 months of age was the norm, but Brazelton's introduction of the child-centered approach and the invention of disposable diapers facilitated later toilet training. In addition, social changes including increased maternal work outside of the home and group child care also have influenced the trend to later initiation of the toilet training. Toilet training now usually begins after the second birthday and it is achieved at about three years of age in middle class population. However, toilet training between 12 and 18 months of age continues to be accepted in the lower income families. Now the prerequisites for achieving elimination in the toilet include the child's ability to recognize the urge for urination and defecation to get to the toilet, to understand the sequence of tasks required, to avoid oppositional behavior, and to take pride in the achievement. Now the entire process of toilet training can take six months and it need not be hurried. Now what is enduresis? Enduresis is a urinary incontinence in a child who is adequately matured to have achieved continence. Enduresis is classified as diurnal that is daytime or nocturnal that is nighttime. Daytime and nighttime dryness are expected by 4 and 6 years of age respectively. Now another useful classification of enduresis is primary and secondary enduresis. Primary enduresis is incontinence in a child who has never achieved dryness and secondary enduresis is incontinence in a child who has been dry for at least six months. Now the cause. Enduresis is a symptom with multiple possible etiological factors. These include developmental difference, organic illness or psychological distress. Primary enduresis often is associated with family history of delayed accusation of the bladder control. Nocturnal enduresis may have a genetic etiology with autosomal dominant phenotypic pattern of inheritance. Although most children with enduresis do not have a psychiatric disorder, but stressful life events can trigger loss of the bladder control. Now sleep physiology may play a role in the etiology of nocturnal enduresis and a high arousal threshold is commonly noted. Now in a subgroup of enduretic children, nocturnal polyuria is due to lack of a nocturnal vasopressing peak. Another possible cause is malfunction of the detrusor muscle of the bladder, which has involuntary contraction even when the bladder contains small amount of urine. And reduced bladder capacity can be associated with enduresis. It is commonly seen in children who have chronic constipation with a large dilated distal colon which impinges on the bladder. Now, enduresis or bedwetting is the most common urological condition in the children. Nocturnal enduresis has a reported prevalence of 15% in 5-year-old, 7% in 8-year-old and 1% in 15-year-old children. Spontaneous remission rate is reported to be 15% per year. Now, nocturnal enduresis is slightly more common in the boys compared with the girls, and the prevalence of daytime enduresis is lower than the nocturnal enduresis. However, it is more common in females, and the ratio is 1 to 1.5 at 7 years of age. Now, the history of the child should focus on clarifying pattern of whiting including frequency, timing whether diurnal or nocturnal, associated conditions or stressful events for example bad dreams, consumption of caffeinated beverages, exhausting days, 
and whether this enteresis is primary or secondary. Systemic review should include developmental history, detailed information about the neurological, urinary and gastrointestinal symptoms including the pattern of defecation. A history of sleep pattern is important including snoring, parasomnias and timing of the nighttime urination. Now, a family history often reveals that one or both parents had enduresis as children. Although enduresis is rarely associated with child abuse, physical and sexual abuse history should be included as part of the psychosocial history. Now, many families have tried numerous intervention before seeking a physician help. Identifying these intervention and how they are carried out helps in the understanding of the child's condition and his role within the family. Now, the physical examination begins with the observation of the child and the parent for clues about child development and parent-child interaction patterns. Special attention is paid to the abdominal, neurological and genital examination. A rectal examination should be performed if the child has constipation. Voiding should be observed if a history of voiding problems such as hesitancy or dribbling is present. The lumbosacral spine should be examined for signs of spinal dysrhythm or a tethered cord. Now for most children with enduresis, the only laboratory test recommended is a clean catch urinalysis to look for chronic urinary tract infection, renal disease and diabetes mellitus. Further testing such as urine culture is based on this urinalysis. Now children with complicated enduresis including children with previous or current UTI, severe voiding dysfunction or a neurological finding are evaluated with a renal sonogram and whiting cystourethrogram. If vesico-urethral reflux, hydronephrosis or posterior urethral wells are found, then the child is referred to a urologist for further evaluation and treatment. Now there is no common identified cause of enduresis and in most cases enduresis resolved by adolescents without treatment. Now the treatment. Treatment begins with treating any diagnosed underlying organic cause of the enduresis. Elimination of the underlying chronic constipation is often curative. Now for a child whose enduresis is not associated with an identifiable disorder, all therapies must be considered in terms of cost in time, money, disruption to the family, the treatment's known success rate and the child's likelihood to recover from the condition without treatment. Now the most commonly used treatment options are conditioning therapy and pharmacotherapy. The clinician can also assist the family in making a plan to help the child cope with the problem until it is resolved. Many children have to live with enduresis for months to year before the cure is achieved and a few children can have symptoms into adulthood. A plan for handling wet garments and linens in a non-humiliating and hygienic manner preserves the child's self-esteem. The child should take as much responsibility as he or she is able, depending on the age, development and family culture. The most widely used conditioning therapy for nocturnal enduresis is the enduresis alarm. Enduresis alarms have an initial success rate of 30 to 60 percent with a significant relapse rate. The alarm is worn on the wrist or clipped into the pajama and has a probe that is placed in the underpants or pajamas in front of the urethra. The alarm sounds when the first drop of urine contacts the probe. The child is instructed to get up and finish voiding in the bathroom when the alarm sounds. Now, pharmacotherapy for nighttime enduresis include desmopressin acetate and rarely tricyclic antidepressants. Desmopressin decreases urine production and it has proved to be safe in the treatment of enduresis. Now, the oral medication is started at 0.2 mg per dose, one dose at bedtime, and then on subsequent night, 
it is increased to 0.4 mg and then 2.6 mg if needed. This treatment must be considered symptomatic, not curative, and it has a relapse rate of 90% when the medication is discontinued. Now, imipramine is rarely used for enduresis nowadays. It reduces the frequency of nighttime wetting and the initial success rate is 50%. It is effective during treatment only and it has a relapse rate of 90% on discontinuation of the medication. The most important contraindication of imipramine is the risk of overdose which is associated with fatal cardiac arrhythmias. Now the complications of enduresis. The psychological consequences can be severe. Families can minimize the impact on the child's self-esteem by avoiding punitive approaches and ensuring that the child is competent to handle issues of their own comfort, hygiene and aesthetics. Appropriate anticipatory guidance to educate parents that bed wetting is common in early childhood helps alleviate considerable anxiety. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health videos.